<clears throat> got everybody here. I got a packed house today. How y'all doing? Oh, <laughs> y'all loaded no up pressure. today. I know uh, certainly not ideal to have a guy like Elijah Kansi go down, but from everything we've heard, it's, it's best case scenario, it sounds like for the, the calf. Can you just speak to the, the camp that he was having so far? Actually, he was doing a really good job from OTAs and right into camp. The thing about him, he's very sharp, asked a lot of questions and everything, and he was kind of doing everything we thought he could do before uh, when he was drafted. So we hope to get him back as soon as we can. And a guy with Travosky Dennis, he just continues to make plays. I think he's up to four interceptions since he became a Buccaneer. And obviously the talk about him coming out of college was those seven sacks. But right. just what he's what he's able to do in, in coverage and just I mean, how do you how do you how do you not get the guy on the field, right? I know that he's he's got a loaded position group there, but no doubt. Well, he has a great characteristic that the ball likes to find him, and that's always a good thing in this league. So when the ball finds him, he's making a lot of plays for us, so it makes for a lot of healthy competition all across the board. Are there, oppor there going to be opportunities for him to possibly be able to get on the field? Again, I know it's really hard when you're playing behind Levante right. David and Devin White. Right. we got two pretty good players there, but the thing about us, the way we play defense, you make plays, we'll find a way to get you on the field. So that's just always been our mantra here. Logan's both uh, bulked up this offseason. What right. have you seen from him early on in camp? First well, day well, the thing is, what really helped Logan was when we go started OTAs and you look at all the film and all the plays and things he can approve on last year, the mistakes that were made. This, so it'll be a big year for him with growth wise. But he was here all offseason, everything. We're expecting uh, uh, him to take a big step forward. He was uh, expected to gain some weight, some size in the weight room. And he and he did that, all that. that noticeable the first day of pads, it, you know, it, it, it really is. And it also noted with his confidence, you know, coming out of college, playing against the guys in this league, it's a, it's a grown man's game. So it really that adjustment and the learning curve did, did him wonders. Speaking to him, he said he feels like he knows the offense a lot more. He can play free and fast. Um, you know, lining him up next to Vita Bay is also going to allow him to you know, eating some blockers and utilize the speed and athleticism that you guys really want to, want to see out of him. Um, what do you think his role is going to be early on in the season? Well, the same thing. He's one. We expect Logan to make plays. You know, we got guys take on blocks, this and that. But Logan has a characteristic that we like coming out of that he can make plays, rushing the quarterback. He's tall. He's athletic. Long. Those are the kind of guys you want on the field. So we expect him to be more in the playmaking mode. Coach Armstrong was saying that um, of all the guys, he's most eager to see Yaya Diaby under the lights. Um, what, what have you seen out of him? Ooh, yeah, this guy, I think this guy has another chance. It's just, well, as you look at the defensive hole, we have a lot of competition across the board, and Yaya is right in the middle of the outside linebacker position. Because all those guys have to like unique traits. Yaya is really strong and powerful. Shaq has elite pass rushing skill. Joe is super fast and athletic. Nelly has the jack of all trades. So then you got Cam Gill and other guys. It's, just, it's a very competitive group right now. What about Ramirez? What, what have you seen? Well, that's the thing about Jose. He, he is something else. He has athleticism. That's what I'm saying. You kind of look back. We go through practice. It's not a ref to get all these guys reps. Then Watts shows up in one-on-one -on -one pass rush. It's just those guys, it's, it's, it's going to be some tough decisions made in that room. Casey, if all goes as planned, is Sanat somebody you can plug into that nacho spot, veteran backup to Vita? Is that kind of what the forecast is? Well, Sanat kind of last year was kind of surprised for me. I thought the scouting department did an outstanding job of one identifying him, and he came in and kind of a tight group and right and kind of found a niche role for himself. You know, Nacho did a good job for us, but Nod is kind of right along that same kind of same kind of role. What have we seen from uh, from Greg Gaines? Well, that's why I was just sitting there looking at it. when you kind of like plug the pieces and play. You know, Greg is a surprising better pass rusher than a lot of people realize when you look at his sack numbers throughout his career and everything, just watching the first couple of days in practice. And he's a, a really good pro just with the short time I've been around him. The guy does a, make a lot of mental mistakes. He's learned our system, and our system is not an easy system to come in and learn. And he's picked it up and everything. And I guess I didn't realize him and Vita were roommates and everything. So their communication is really good and everything is just I'm very pleased with where he is right now. Coach, uh, Devin White said yesterday that uh, a big focus is restoring the run defense to where it was two or three years ago. Oh, no doubt. 
Um, is there a key aspect that you're focused in on with that? Well, the thing is, we made it was everybody had a hand in it. It was like we just got to fix the support. We just it all starts up front, so we got to make sure we need to be. We got to make sure we're not misfitting. And you know, we're usually we try to outnumber you in the box, so it ain't schematics would not necessarily the problem. So if it is, we adjusted that. Where safety is something get out safety, you got to get them on the ground and give us another sound. We all had a hand in it, so we all got to have a hand in getting it fixed. Where you know what C.J. Brewer, as he makes a transition from XFL to NFL? You know what, C.J. is kind of the good thing of what C.J. coming from the system, the team he was with, where he had a lot of the same carryover from uh, coming from Wade Phillips' system in the XFL to us as we all were with Wade together in Dallas. A lot of terminology, a lot of, so his transition has been pretty smooth because he was able to pick up everything pretty fast. You got Shaq Barrett back to start a training camp as a full go. I know that's that's got to please everybody in the building, including you. No doubt, because going into vacation, no one knew, but he's busted his butt. And, you know, right now, not only was he participant, he was a full participant, like you said, and that was just amazing how eager he is to get back out there. And then the first couple of days of practice, we're, we're, he wants more reps than we're giving him. So that's that's a good thing. Looks like there's no hesitation. Not at all. Not at all. Because everything, when he's in, we're calling. We're not taking anything. Everything we call it, running, executing, everything. No holds back. There's a lot of pressure on Joe Trinchenko this year um, to you know, finish at the top of his route. So no doubt. He's got the speed athleticism to get there. What are some things that you're noticing uh, that maybe he worked on in the offseason that are showing up uh, so far in camp, early in camp? Well, we talked about it, and it's not just Joe. I think everything ties together, you know what I'm saying? We, well, in fact, we had one of our first pass rush meetings today. It's got to, everything, the game's got to be tighter. Executing our game's got to be tighter. Winning our one-on-ones, creating the matchups we want, just stuff like that. But here, Joe is um, the one is a tremendous kid and great athlete. So now he's just got to put it all together. And the f thing is, we know he can do it. What, what is it that separates some of these young pass rushers from so close, which is kind of where Joe's been, but well, just not quite being able to get the quarterback on well, the Well, the margin of error is just so close, you know, and the thing is, he, he's a little quicker here, a little quicker there. Some of those quarterback hits turn into sacks or this and that, and just, they come in bunches. Sometimes you can have a great rush and not get the results, so that, it just got to work for him. He just, but if he keeps working, good things will happen for him. What do you like so far about what you've seen at you, you know what, it's, that's another competitive position. And we got some young guys vying for that position and they're they're all showing up at different times. So that's the thing is that going into camp, you got to say, well, who was our guy? I think pretty, and pretty soon after one or two preseason games, it'll be crystal clear. Who are you most looking forward to watching? Or, or it could be one or, or multiple guys that you're kind of looking forward to seeing when those lights come on. You know, really, it's really all our rookies. For our older guys, I kind of know what kind of expect. It's just our young guys because we got some young guys that we're going to count on, and I, we expect them to do a, a good job because just what we're seeing in practice, our what you call our twos and bag up players, we are a lot younger. We're a lot more athletic than we've been in the past, and we got some guys that we're going to have to find a way to get them on the field. You talk about you know, getting those guys – Getting back to the run game, the safeties having their hand in in, in the secondary. Ryan Neal is a really great box player in the safe as a safety. What have you seen out of him in run support and just as as a versatile piece to use on that defense? Well, the thing about having Ryan here is the thing, just seeing him, the stuff that you guys aren't seeing, that he's a really true pro. They're coming up all the time, getting extra film study, this and that. And we said earlier, we don't have a – our defense is somewhat complicated. He's got a lot of moving parts to it. And he's come and picked it in, the communication between him and Wynn and the other stuff we're trying to do on the back end that we think will help us going forward. He's picked it up, um, definitely a team player. It's just – so far, he's seemed like a really good fit. Talking about Vita Vea, famous, uh, six and a half sacks last year. It's rare that a nose tackle leads a team in sacks. Probably not ideal, but he spent a lot of time at, at the, in the B gap last year. Sure. Maybe not as much this year with Kalaja and, and Logan Hall, but what did, what did that experience do for him in terms of, of his confidence, his pass rush, and uh, what, what type of year do you expect from him between those two younger players and Logan Hall and Kalaja? 
what a thing about Vita and when we talked about it earlier, we gotta keep him going going forward, you know. It's not gonna be good enough him just to play okay. He's gonna have to try play at a high, high level. And the thing is with our system, the way we do things, we create some matchups for him, this and that. The key for him is gonna be take advantage of favorable matchups. When he doesn't do that, well he's just so so. We get that's where he's gotta take the next step. Uh, I know that in, in talking to some folks, um, sources the goal seems to be with Kansi. I know it's a week by week thing, but the goal is, is week one, right? Um, if he does miss all the preseason, and we saw that with Vita Bay a few years ago in 2018, but just what um, what will he have to kind of get up to speed really quickly on to be able to you know make up for that lost time? Well, the thing is, is just to stay up on the installs and everything. You know, he's a talented kid. As long as he knows what he's doing, he can play fast. It's like you kind of said earlier, when younger players, when they don't really know exactly what they're doing, they tend to play so. As long as he knows exactly what he's doing, his athleticism and the things he do well will show up. You don't have to worry about him losing any of that. No, he'll be all right. He's going to be in every meeting. He'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you guys later.